lab number 245. In this lab, we will start working on application logic uh, of our hybrid wallet and now it's time to focus on displaying cards on our page. As you remember, we managed to get a list of cards from our backend emulation, but now instead of uh, displaying just a card holder name, we will actually need to draw a card. So for that we will use two things. First of all, uh, we will use the blank image that uh, contains uh, just a mock-up of our card. And then based on data we received from a backend, we will need to draw information about the card number on it, uh, the date until which this card will be valid and of course uh, the holder name. And afterwards we will try to display this uh, card list in some kind of carousel. Let's start by opening our text editor, Atom, that we use in this project. And uh, inside Hybrid Wallet Cordova, we need to open uh, templates, uh, top cards, that we are using right now to display the card holder name in the repeatable list. So to draw a card and then draw on top of the card, we will use Canvas component. Uh, so for that, let's just create a simple one, something like, uh, let's call it uh, card canvas. So ID will be card canvas. Uh, the settings of this and heights will be predefined uh, based on our uh, image dimensions. So here we have a uh, width equal to 235 and uh, heights equal to uh, 150 and then we also need to specify that this canvas uh, will be hidden so the idea is that uh, we will prepare card images using this canvas but uh, the user of the app won't see that, he will see only the results, so that's why we are hiding our canvas. So our image with the card should be taken from uh, lab 245 files, so find it on your local machine or uh, on the web. Uh, so basically what we need is this card PNG image, um, I can copy it and uh, pass inside our dev workspaces uh, hybrid wallet Cordova and then www image right here and basically as you can see this image uh, just contain a mock-up it doesn't have the uh, card number doesn't have the card holder name nothing so we'll draw that manually so for now we can save this uh, tab cards html and navigate uh, to our gs controllers gs and here inside cards controller, as you remember, uh, the load cards function actually uh, returns us the list of cards. Here we have them, cards loaded. And uh, basically before applying changes to scope, uh, we'll need to um, actually go through this repeatable cards. And uh, for each of them, uh, draw on the image, the card holder name, the, everything that we need. And basically then save this image inside the list and uh, display results on the page afterwards. So we'll go through this repeatable uh, list using Angular uh, for each. And basically inside we need to pass first of all object of course and then iterator. So in our case the object will be this scope card. And uh, the iterator uh, will be just uh, key and value. Just like that. And basically uh, what we will do inside is that first of all uh, we will get the canvas elements. Uh, so for that so we will create first a variable let's call it the same way uh, canvas and then uh, using the document we'll get element uh, by ID and as you remember our ID was card canvas.
So now when we have these elements, uh, what we will do next is uh, we will create another variable for our context. So context will be used for, for drawing and so we will be drawn in uh, 2D in, uh, in this dimension. So we'll need to specify that. So canvas get context and then pass 2D as a parameter there. Now we need to create a new image object uh, on which we will be a drawing. So image uh, object and uh, this will just new image. So basically uh, next we need to specify uh, the source of this image. In our case this image object uh, source src will be equal to uh, the path that uh, we used when we were copying our cards PNG, so images and inside images this card PNG. Just like that. And uh, the next thing what we will do is we will create a function uh, that will be called uh, once this image object is loaded. So it will look like image object uh, on load. And everything that we need to do inside is actually to draw. So I will be using the properties that are already predefined and that will fit uh, to the current image sizes. Uh, but of course, I will explain all of that. So first of all, uh, we need to specify context uh, draw image to draw the image itself. And uh, here we need to pass the parameters about what image we will uh, actually display in this canvas. In our case, uh, we just defined that image object. And we also need to set a position for this image. So in our case, the offset will be quite small, uh, 10 from uh, the left side and 10 from top, just like that. Uh, the next thing that we need to do is specify the font that will be used for uh, drawing the text because we are interested in a drawing, first of all, the card number. So for that, uh, we will need to specify the font using the same context. So it will look like this uh, context font uh, equal to some font value. In our case, in order not to mess with pixels, we will be using M's. Uh, so we need to specify 1.1M and the font will be uh, courier uh, new. This font is equal to uh, the fonts that people are using when uh, drawing the uh, card number uh, on, on the real card. So it will be look almost like a real one. Then by default, because we have a black color by default, we need to specify that this one will be white. So for that, again, context that we will use and then we'll need to use fill style. So fill style is actually uh, the font color in our case and we can just type here white uh, to use as a white colored font. Next thing what we need to do is actually to draw some text. So uh, in our case, it will be looking like this. Let's use uh, fill text, of course, uh, with the context up front. And then uh, we should enter some value here. So in our particular case, because we are already inside our uh, simple cycle for each and we have our value here, so our uh, text will be a value of card number, but of course without quotes. And it should be passed a bit different. So uh, fill text is passing like this. We are providing the text that we are passing and then the offset. In our case, uh, from the left side, the offset will be 37. And then from the top, the offset will be 110. Uh, so with this offset, with this text, we will fill the cards uh, name, the, I mean the card number. And I will copy all these three uh, things, the font, fill style and fill text once again. Actually, we don't need fill style, uh, it's already specified once, but we need two fill texts. Uh, one will be for a card, card holder name, the second one will be for a date. So uh, 
date is actually date until uh, when our card will be uh, valid and here we should have value name. So the font size should, should be uh, 0.6m and the offsets uh, for, for name should be 37 from the left side and 137 uh, from top and uh, for a date 137 from, from top and 133 uh, from the left side, just like that. And the last thing here, uh, we will need to actually get our image somehow. And the idea is that we will uh, get the image uh, URL in base64 format and then uh, push this image uh, with the URL and the ID to a list. And then basically inside tab cards will repeat the items in that list. So uh, let's create a variable something like scope current image for example and using a canvas to uh, data URL we will transform our uh, canvas that uh, have all our drawings that we just did to uh, an image to actually string to base64 and next thing we will do a push so uh, we will use for that let's call it something like cards images uh, new array that we will uh, arrange and we will need to push uh, to this card images uh, our newly created item so let's first of all push their id equal to our value id so this will be unique id of our card that we have in our repeatable uh, cards list and the second thing is we will push here image uh, that is equal to scope current image like that and final thing what we will need to do is to clear this image object uh, because the next iteration uh, shouldn't be drawing on top of this one it should create a fresh one so uh, image object will be just empty uh, let's also do an init for for these cards images somewhere here And let's try to display those images in our top cards instead of this uh, card name. So uh, here we don't need a list anymore. Uh, we can actually use something like diff uh, for that. So let's change this to diff. And then uh, we are repeating card inside cards images, something like this. And here inside uh, we will have the image with uh, ng src equal to the value of uh, card image. Just like that. And now we can close this one. So I will open the terminal using the term package and you should do the same. Um, and uh, first of all, I will navigate to server side project uh, and start the server. If you have your server already started, you can ignore this step, but I will need to wait until the server will start up. And now when my server started, I can uh, go back to Cordova project so hybrid swallowed cordova and uh, do mfp preview to preview uh, the changes that i just did in a simple browser so of course we need to perform authentication first uh, username is user password is password Looks like nothing will gonna happen. Let's check the console. Yes, so uh, get element by ID uh, by should be starting from uppercase. Just like that. And we also need to modify the scope apply. Uh, most probably won't see it otherwise. 
So uh, basically what we should do, uh, we should add some kind of uh, calculation of number of items inside this scope cards. Uh, so something like, let's call this variable n. And here we will uh, have calculation of uh, scope cards length. Just like that. And let's also create a variable i that will be equal to zero from the start. And then inside uh, each iteration, we will add one to this i. And at the end, we will check if i will be equal to n. Uh, so this means that we are entered uh, and just created the last image. Uh, we will actually perform a scope apply to see the changes just like that. So we can save it, uh, close this preview and start it again. So user password And here we have our cards list. So basically now when we have this cards list as an images, the next thing that we need should be... So basically now when we have our cards list as the set of images, the next thing we need to do is actually to uh, prepare some kind of carousel. And we will do it using the component called Angular Carousel. So let's uh, look for that Angular carousel. So we are interested in uh, uh, this first link that you have. Uh, Angular carousel is pretty simple components. Uh, we can check the demos right here. And this is the way how uh, we actually interested cards to work. So this will be a repeatable list and inside we will have our card images. So what we need to do is to go back to uh, this GitHub URL and uh, take this border installation pass. So for that, let's go back to our editor. Uh, let's actually close this preview and type here the link that we just copied. So border install Angular carousel. We don't need report user statistics, so select no. And now uh, everything was added under both components uh, here on top. So we can open uh, back the browser and navigate back to this Angular Carousel uh, GitHub page. And actually read the documentation. So as you can see, uh, we need to include some uh, script files. So we already have Angular.js here. Uh, things that we are missing is Angular uh, Touch and Angular Carousel. So let's copy this code and uh, then go back to index.html file. And uh, basically we will load that uh, right after loading the Cordova.js somewhere here. So instead of having it under Boer components separately, uh, let's open the file browser, navigate to dev workspaces, hybrid wallet Cordova, then www, uh, actually Boer Cordova, Boer components, and cut this Angular color cell and Angular touch from here and pass inside www lib right here. And now we can go back and uh, actually check that under lib we have these two folders. So first we need to go to Angular Color Cell and then check for uh, dist. And the file that we are interested in here is Angular Color Cell uh, GS. So right click, uh, copy project pass, and let's replace it uh, with what we had here. So we don't need hybrid wallet Cordova and www. So we can remove that and just remain everything after lib. And the same logic for Angular Touch. 
So just copy the project pass. Just like that. Uh, next thing what we need to do is to go to app.js and add a reference here. So the same as it was on the web page. Here, Angular Carousel. And then let's go back to the web page and copy one of the code samples, uh, this one that we will modify. Uh, so let's go back and pass it inside our tab cards right here before our ng repeat with image. So what we need to change here, first of all, uh, the class in our case uh, will be called uh, carousel3. Just like that, this is the predefined CSS that we have. Um, so next thing we'll need to have an index to know which uh, is the current position uh, that is selected in this carousel. So uh, well, carousel index will be equal to a variable that we'll create. So let's call it cards index, something like that. Uh, and uh, last thing that we need to add here as directive is uh, actually a transition. In our case, it's again predefined. Uh, carousel uh, transition should be equal to hexagon like that. So now we need to modify a bit this image that we have inside. So first of all, uh, we are repeating uh, the cards image as you remember. And here we have card. So class here uh, will be called uh, BG image um, and basically here uh, what we will do, we will remove uh, this text with the image and we will add ng style uh, here as a directive and right here in ng style we will actually uh, set the background image dynamically of course. So in our case uh, the background image uh, will be equal to just like that will be equal to a uh, URL and here inside the URL we will have uh, the cart uh, image value well, like the same that we had here so card image and basically we will need to remove this uh, div with images afterwards uh, that we have and one more thing that we need to do is to add the CSS uh, to our style CSS and we can do it uh, by going to lab 245 files there we have a carousel CSS file uh, that basically uh, you need to open uh, with some text editor and copy everything that is inside and uh, pass inside the style CSS file. Now we can save this and type MFP preview. Oops, uh, yes, this is not exactly what we expected. Uh, let's try to fix that. So first of all, let's go back to top cards and yep. Uh, this carousel should be actually inside the div. So it should be called uh, carousel demo, just like that. And we should close it also. And we also uh, should add uh, the, the carousel buffered uh, directive here. Mm 
just like that. And we forgot to load the CSS for, for a carousel uh, specifically. So it's located under under uh, carousel, this CSS file. So what we will do, copy one of the references here and then copy uh, project pass for under carousel CSS and pass it here. Just like that. So now we can type uh, here MFP push. And refresh our page. So this is the result that we expected. Uh, we see the carousel, uh, but as you saw, it's starting from the uh, index uh, zero and it's not really cool because you are not seeing the card here. So let's change that uh, simply in our controller. So somewhere on the top when we just started our controller right here, uh, let's set scope card index equal to first. So we'll have one card uh, from the left side and then we'll stay on, on the first one and not on, on the zero. And uh, basically that's it. Let's do MFP push once again. And refresh the page. Here we go. So uh, now this carousel works as expected and we have our cards. Uh, the same actually uh, will be uh, working if we have a uh, UI that is suitable only for mobile devices, it will look even better because part of the card will be hidden basically by screen. So on this step, uh, our lab number 245 is finished and we'll continue our development of uh, this mobile application in the next labs. Thank you.